All right, guys, a very good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nimit Pakani. Welcome to another episode of At the Table uh, with Urban Forex. So today I have here with me again uh, the panel. We have Armo, Lucas, Hello. Hey. Ian. Yeah, how's it going? All right, all right. So we have a very interesting topic today. Uh, it was a topic brought up about by many of the students talking about this. This is more psychological based when it comes to trading and patience. There's a lot of uh, discussions around patience of, well, what if I know how to trade, but I have a problem getting into my trade because I'm getting in either too early or perhaps too late. Both of them revolve around patience, right? Either having too less of patience or too much of patience. Uh, I wanted to get your feedback on you guys here uh, that I've called you in on this panel to see what are your takes on it? What are your experiences with it? And, you know, what, what part are you? Are you, do you have too much patience? Do you have too less patience? Is I think right I'm on the wrong panel. Because I, I thought we would be talking about that Windows 95 card game. So I'm, I'm not prepared for this. Ah, well, well, good. That will test my patience. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lucas, let's start with you and let's uh, hear about what is your experience with, with when it comes to patience? Is that an issue? Is this something that is a real problem out there for many, many traders? Has this been a problem for you when you've been trading? I think um, look, just looking at the trading community, not just you know our own community, but everywhere people are struggling with patience and it's, it's not really struggling with being too patient. They usually say they lack patience and then getting into trades too early it's always that case it's quite rarely that we hear people saying oh i was too patient because then i missed the trade we do have that time to time but not not that of often i think okay what i see yeah. all right so so majority of the people fall under the fomo side right the fear of missing the trade kind of thing yeah. they, they fall under that category of oh no i should take the yeah. trade now before it goes so not enough patience all right. So that's 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 interesting. What is your experience with it? What what have what have you experienced in your years that you've been trading? What have you experienced? What's your exposure to it? Oh, well, at first I was like everyone else, thinking that I have anger management, patience issues, that kind of stuff <laughs> that I need to deal with. <laughs> okay. But then, but then as I as, as I studied more, I think it's more of knowing what you're trying to look for. Okay. Um, because if you know what you're trying to look for, that's not much patience involved, right? You're just trying to look for that thing. And if that thing, AKA a setup appears, then you just take the trade. If, if you don't take the trade, that's a whole another problem itself. But, um, I'm not too sure if people are, you know, looking at patience being a problem the right way, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So has that helped by saying, if we just focus on the system itself or the technique that we're trying to trade, will that get rid of the patient's issues? Is that something that we can uh, um, use to solve? I think most of it could be solved with having a, you know, a system or strategy. Okay. But if you have those stuff and you're still taking trades prematurely, then just go to the bathroom and cry. <laughs> like, 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 Lucas is sitting for life. Go to the bathroom and cry. <laughs> it's a one fix solves all. I think that. Yeah, that's it. That's the answer. That's the answer. <laughs> no stop loss. That's the stop loss right there. Like, <laughs> if the trade's not working, go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, Ian. What is your take on it? What is your take on this whole patience dilemma when it comes for traders and dealing with patience? I think. I think maybe we should even have a counter of how many times we say the word patience in this webinar, uh, in this yeah, podcast. Yeah, we need a poll, some sort of a poll or something to keep track. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, but, but talking about that, it's what, what brings it interesting is as we're done with this uh, podcast, we'll also switch this over into a live webinar. So all of you guys were attending here live, coming to this podcast and tuning in live and not just tuning in onto the um, recording once it's launched on iTunes or Amazon or anywhere. But um, you will be able to watch the webinar that is coming right after this. And we're going to be talking in more details with patients on a chart, on a chart. So, yeah. So I wanted to bring it back to you, Ian, and uh, ask you about, you know, what is your take on patients and, you know, what would you say is right or wrong with it? 
Well, I, I think like Lucas brought up the, the main point that I think most people uh, have the FOMO. Um, I think for myself, uh, just in my experience, I'm actually on probably other side. I'm, I tend to have a bit more patience maybe than I should. And perhaps that's because I've, I have two young kids. I'm not really sure. Uh, over the years, I've had to like, I don't know if, if anyone's had, I'm sure other people who are listening and whatnot have had the experience of being on a road trip and are we there yet? Are we there yet? And, and <laughs> any, all the patience issues that comes with having kids. So I think I've developed an over patience sometimes. And, and, and there's a, a balance I think you need. Uh, I don't know if you guys agree with that, but like um, I know there's some times where I've been waiting a bit too much for a trade, for example, uh, and then I don't get in and then it leaves. And then I'm like, Oh, I knew it was going to go that way or, you know, that kind of a thing. So um, that's okay. my take on it. So I, I was actually under the impression if you have kids, you lose patience. <laughs> well, in the beginning, yes, that's that's true. It's something you have to work through for a few years. Uh, okay. But I think you kind of grow a thick skin to it after a while. And then it's just kind of <laughs> kind of like uh, it's something that grows on you, I think. So, OK, OK, fair enough, fair enough. So you're dealing with a opposite issue than most people having too much patience getting ready, preparing for your trades, and then the trade leaves and you're like, oh man, why didn't I get in? Does that sound about right? Yeah, for yeah, for the most, that's more my my issue personally, what I've experienced, yeah. Okay, so you can, we, we can clearly see just on this panel already, we have issues like that, that uh, it isn't always a FOMO thing. Patience is not always a FOMO thing. There is an issue even on the other side of the line, which is, hey, I waited too long to take the trade. It's the opposite of yeah. FOMO. Right. Sometimes you can get almost too much information. Like if that makes any sense, you know, like sometimes overanalyzing can almost paralyze you. If, if, if you kind of get what I mean, it's like you yeah. see everything. I, I'm sure the moment you said that everyone who's tuning in is tuning to a vocabulary saying analysis by paralysis. On the flip side too, like I do see the other point as well, because don't get me wrong. Like sometimes when I do enter a trade um, on the, you'll exit right away. You know what I mean too? And, I, and there's that level where I don't have patience. So it's, it's kind of a weird dynamic that like too much patience, not enough patience. It's really a balance, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I think the, the easiest way to get that balance, because it, when, when you're speaking, Ian, the only solution that come, uh, you know, came to my head was just have a plan. Just have, you know, a solid strategy of knowing what you want to do, where you want to do, uh, take another action on your trade, that kind of stuff. It, it, it could all be solved if you have a plan. I yeah, think. correct. That's what I believe. Right. Now, the, the whole whole point around it um, is, if you, if you really think about it, is it's not just a patience issue getting in a trade, right? Isn't there a patience yeah. issue getting out of a trade as well? Yes. Waiting too long or exiting too early, that's another thing right there. So there's an element of, well, there's a problem at the entry part, but there's also a problem at the exit, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Arma, what is your take on it? What is your take on uh, uh, patience? Well, I've, I've also seen both sides. Uh, what Ian said, when, when you're just being too patient, maybe looking for too much confirmation, definitely have that. But also the other side, I, I clearly remember a day in 2016, I, and I remember it because it was a very bad day for me trading wise and also because we were trading um with a group uh, so some of the other students were, were down uh with us and I, I was maybe because the others were there but i was so excited to you know get good results that i was impatient to do the analysis properly i just got in and then i had a loss and then i didn't reanalyze i was not patient enough to do that got into the next one and had like 10 losing trades in a row which is an achievement in itself right. so yeah, I've definitely seen that side as well. And and what you just said with, um, you know, getting out too fast, being not patient enough with uh, with the exits. Oh, it's it's in green now. I better bank my profits so you know I don't lose them. All right. Definitely, I have seen that that side as well. Right. Right. Yeah. So, wouldn't we all say that uh, this is a common issue with everybody? Because it's easy to say, you know. When you're trading, you want to cut your losses short and let your profits run. 
Bring me that guy and I will shoot him. <laughs> like, bring him to me. Like it's it's easier said than done. Um, especially yeah. if you're starting out as a trader, it's so much easier said than done. It's the king um, of open doors. Yeah, it's 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 basically saying, oh, you know, life is easy. You just got to be happy. Like, ah, no. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like... <laughs> All right. So there's there's a few sides to it. Then there's that side A, which is uh, early entries. Side B to that is late entries. Let's talk about those things though. Let's go deeper. What happens if the person gets into the trade? So let's let's just say trader A, okay? So trader A, he's dealing with two little patients, right? Okay, excessive FOMO in, in his body mm. or her body. And then trade's getting ready. The entry is is in now. Would you say the person is still able to calmly look at that and saying, wait a minute, I'm in too early? Or does a person just think, no, man, this is it. This is it. This is the moment where this thing will fly and go higher than Jeff Bezos did recently. You know, <laughs> is that the case? Is that what they're, you know, do they feel euphoric? Yeah, I don't know. But for, I think for me, like based on my personal experience, when I lack patience, of course, this this happens to us all the time, right? So if I lack the patient and I, and I got in on a trade, the second I click on, let's say I'm on a buy trade, the second I click on buy, right, I'll be thinking to myself, I'm done. This is this probably is not gonna work. What are you doing, Lucas? That's, <laughs> that thing just keeps on going, repeating in my head, and then just you know, stop me out, and then just went into my way. Okay. So let, let's take that further. Okay, so let's say you you are able to become conscious of it. Would you say that was happening to you in the early stages of your career or that develops over time as you become more and more immune to those mistakes and you're like, okay, I see what's happening. Does it happen in an early stage of the career where you where you can yeah. actually see yourself making the mistake? I think in early stages of my career, I wouldn't be able to recognize it because I wouldn't know what's right or what's too early, what's wrong. Right. But in later stages, then, yeah, probably gets easier to recognize when when's too early and when's too late. OK, so here's a here's a part where I want to touch base on even further. What happens when you do activate a trade that is too early or too late? And now now as the trade is running into a profit or a loss and the trade closes, let's say the trade is getting ready to go in the right way. Are you in the right frame of mind to trade now? So I want to ask all of you guys that. Would you take the next trade or would you let it go because you're too damaged by the previous experience? Because it's so close. It also depends on what stage of your trading career you are. Yeah, but it, in, in the beginning, that'll be it'll be hard to do the right thing. So it depends whether that next trade setup is, is a good setup or not. So you need to you know, analyze that. Right. Um, but in the beginning of your trading career, it's hard to draw the right conclusion on the, uh, based on that analysis. Yeah, okay. I, I think even in the beginning, you might just be so set on like a trade that it's like you'll just enter again, just to enter again without yeah uh, necessarily real purpose. Whereas with more experience, you may enter again, but you've done, um, you've at least looked into the trade again and said, is it still valid? So I. Yeah. So I think it's just a different um, sense of why you're getting in the second time with experience versus not with experience. So if that's my take, I think. Correct. Correct. Okay. I, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Okay. All right. So we're going to the different scenarios, right? So now let's, let's talk about scenario B. Okay. Scenario B is a person who is too patient. Okay. Person is too patient. The trade's getting ready to do a buy, the buy begins, and then it's like, oh no, it's now moving without me, and the person gets in now. Been there. Right? <laughs> so now it's like, I waited too long. I knew it was gonna be there. I was there at my desk in front of my screen. It's not like I was chilling. I, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm here to do the work required, but the trade is leaving without me. I just didn't pull the trigger. But now that it has shown me a little bit, now I've pulled the trigger. What do you really think the issue is? Is it patience? What do you think the issue might be? 
Well, speaking from my experience, I don't think it's only patience, but it's also other things like f fear of losing, fear of being wrong. So it's it's definitely not only patience. Okay, so there's a, there's a lot patience. more emotions around it. It's yes. not just it's not just a, a patience issue thing, right? There's a yeah. lot more issues around it. Okay. Yeah, lack lack of planning, lack of prep. Yeah, yeah, lack of um, planning too. <laughs> yeah, is usually. So if, if we if we talk about this a little bit more and, and we just talk about, OK, we, we went with person A who gets in early. Once the trade is damaged and the trade's getting ready again, he may or may not take it again, depending on how early of a stage in his career is in. If he gets in again, early stages of his career, that trade is a guaranteed loss. If he gets in again, later stages of his career, there's a higher chance that trade can actually work out because he knows yeah. what he actually yeah. wanted to to see and now he or she sees he's, it. Yeah, he's getting in for a reason. It's not getting in for a reason. Now let's talk about that one thing that makes someone get in into a trade again in their early stage early stages of their career. What makes someone get into the buy, the buy loses, they get into the buy almost immediately again. What is that instant buying that happens in the early stages of career. What's going on to the person's mind? What is he or she trying to accomplish? This time it's going to be different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't want to be wrong. Got to look good for everybody. It's on YouTube. No one's going to believe that I have that fancy car without being right. So yeah. So it's this, yeah. it's this notion of, I want the best price. Yeah. Oh, I just got a better price or maybe it's even yeah. a revenge feelings or feelings of revenge. Yeah. Yeah. So any any little snap back into his direction, he'll be like, oh, now it's going. Yeah. Any snap back. Oh, now it's going. So this is what gets them into these trades and saying, OK, well, I'm, I'm in this buy now. Oh, loss. I'm in this buy now. Loss. I'm in this buy now. Loss. But in this each stage of the way, the, the beautiful trader has something to explain it away. First time I didn't see that. My support's a little bit lower. I drew my support level wrong. Okay. Still lost third time. Third time's the charm. <laughs> like, that's the analysis. Third time's the charm. That's fine. So it has nothing to do with the first two. Third time the charm. This this one I'm gonna make it. That has a loss. Fourth time comes in. Now there's a bitterness inside where it's like, I better make this money now. I have so much of the losses from before. Mm -hmm. What do you think happens with the lot size on the fourth trade? Maybe three yeah, times the usual losses. size, right? And then that, that turns size into a goes loss. Up. That lot size goes up. He <laughs> suddenly becomes a big boy player where he's like, you know what? I'm feeling good. This trade better work. I leverage to uh, settings. <laughs> yeah. Let me call the broker and be like, listen, man, you got to put some more zeros on my leverage <laughs> so I can trade this pair with as as many lot sizes as possible because it's do or die you know 50 cent said get rich or die trying so i'm gonna do that right now you know <laughs> it's like it's this yeah. notion of i must do it i must do it what's the point you know then they take the trade lose this money they look back on the trade on the weekends then you know they they conclude the problem they have is oh i have a patience issue and that sums it all up for that guy He's just yeah. going to think he has a patience issue. Correct. And then that revolves and that is a negativity that sits in the back of that person's mind and says, I don't have a trading issue. I have a psychological problem. Yeah. And that's yeah. what the industry feeds and bombards that person saying, you don't have a trading issue. You don't have a trading system <laughs> issue. You don't have an edge issue. Your mind is messed up. <laughs> it's like it, they just go after that poor individual's mind and saying, Hey, if we keep saying that, we're not accountable. It's your problem. You know, the industry loves doing that. They just blame the person and saying, it's your fault, buddy. You know, you have a you have a psychological issue. Yeah, it's not lack of skills, it's lack of patience. But that's not really the case. That's not really the case, yeah. So now with now that you guys have a lot more experience, you know, collectively under your belt, would you say psychology is really, really a big core issue or is it a core issue in the early stages i think in the i wouldn't early say stages. the early stages at all because in the early stages you're really trying to learn what you need to know about the charts and what you need to understand okay it only becomes as you know a psychological issue when you're 
when you're already knowing what you're trying to do, but you're still making that mistake, then maybe you have something you need to work on, you know, on your, on your mindset. Okay. So like a little the, stage two or something like not in the early, early stages, but as you're slightly more developed and you know a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think people often confuse having emotions with having psychological issues. And I think there's a difference there. Because, you know, emotions is what makes us humans, but n not every human has psychological issues. Right, right. So w what is the answer then? Should we just move on to trading systems because a robot doesn't have fear, greed and all that stuff? Is a system is the right answer? No, because the whole market revolves around human emotions. So th you actually need them to trade because if you understand how human emotions work in the market, then you understand how the market operates. There you go. There you go. That's a very fascinating thing that you just said. And I really like that. And I think that's that's the the nail. What's the word? Nail on, on the coffin. coffin. Nail on the coffin. There you go. <laughs> it's a nail on the head. Nail on the head. There you go. But that's I think that's a very good point that you bring up. Um, when when you're dealing with patients to a certain level where, you know, years and years pass by, everyone's blaming you, then you're like, OK, should I do a trading system because a trading system is the answer. I need to remove fear and greed from my body. That's never going to happen. If, if that's what you think that is the answer, that's never going to happen, period. So I don't want anyone to ever say I need, I must remove fear and greed from my emotions because I know people who trade for a living. It is becoming more common to see people trade for a living than it was 10 years ago. There's yeah, a please. lot more people trading for a living than it was 10 years ago, where it was a, a handful of people underground who know what to do and they're quiet. One of the things that makes them better traders, one of the things that makes a successful trader is this notion of, I understand how the human behavior works around each of these elements. So if I have a support and the prices are pulling back and I want to buy off my support, I am constantly aware of, if that thing slips, what do you think the public might do? Yes. If that thing reverses right back, what do you think the public might do? What is the volume doing around that? It's this slight adjustment to your strategy based on thinking about who am I actually trading against? It is not a chart pattern. I'm trading against people and their emotions versus my emotions. That's what it is, right? What is war? War is Hey, you made me look bad. I'm coming to your country to take all your oil. <laughs> like That's what it is. That's basically what it is. It is a, a battle of emotions. And what, yeah. what any battle is, it's just basically someone's emotion got hurt. Therefore, he needs to stand up for it or she needs to stand up for it. So that's constantly what it is. So that's why all these extra trades that come in, they're revenge trades as they're labeled into these books. Revenge trading means I had a loss. I got to make that money back. I had a loss. I got to make that money back over and over again. Right. But then yeah. once that loss piles up and you do make that one winner, you don't even have time to celebrate because your winner looks so small. When the winner looks so small, you never train your own psych, your own psychology that I like the way I feel when I win. You've only trained yourself of this is how I feel when I lose. Your body does not know what is right and wrong. All he knows is you keep losing. You keep losing. I don't like this feeling. I think it gets gets even worse because your body would think trading makes me feel shit. So I wouldn't be trading. Yeah. I wouldn't want to trade anymore. I wouldn't want to trade anymore. This, so, you know, do we blame people who says, you know, I've been in this for like a year and uh, I don't like it. Uh, I quit. Anyone would, right? Hmm. It's only normal. If they don't feel like quitting, they're not human. <laughs> so if then, And everyone goes through that phase where they want to quit. And many do. Many do. Because they gave themselves a certain period of time. And they're like, I tried it. I don't like how I feel. I quit. What is this? What do we do with jobs? I, I go to one job. I work there. Is it the job that makes a person stay or quit? Or is it how they feel? It's always yeah. how they feel. It's always how they feel. Trading is no different. Trading is no different. How does it make you feel? You actually touched on something there too. Just, I know we're, we've been discussing just about specifically with trading or patients, but also with like, 
you say that people like, because it's true, a lot of people will quit when they don't have success. But in the learning phase, just when you getting the proper knowledge, having that patience to stick to stick with it and to practice uh, in the learning stage and, st and that kind of patience is important too, I think for success in this industry and st staying patient with the process, uh, uh, you know, um, if you kind of get kind of what I mean by that on the education side. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It's a very sensitive topic to many people because many people can relate to this. All of you guys who are here live and uh, tuning in live, would you say patience is a big issue for many, many people, including yourself? Would you say that's an issue that you would love to work on and find out what is the answer around it? How do we solve this thing? Okay, let's talk about some of the solutions now. Now, we've we talked about the different variations. We talked about how certain people respond to certain things. We talked about how they feel. We also talked about what the industry blames you for. What's the solutions around it? Let's talk about that a little bit. How, how can you overcome this if we know this is a big problem? How do we overcome it? Don't say trading systems. <laughs> it's like, please no one say trading systems. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> if whatever the solution that you guys are going to tell me right now, will it make the losses disappear? No. So the losses are still going to be there. Maybe less, but they might still yes. be there. So the emotion never goes away. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't. People always have this idea where if I'm a if I want to be a successful trader, I got to remove all my emotions. I got to act like, like a robot in front of the charts. That's just humanly impossible. And, you know, I, I know a lot of books, a lot of blogs always, you know, say stuff like that. You have to trade without your emotions. But again, that's just what the industry is doing to traders these days, especially like newer traders. Sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> How do how do we find a solution around the patient's issue? Well, just calling on the problems here, not giving any solutions. <laughs> if I may, I, in preparation for, uh, for this podcast, I, I looked into the elite community and see what people were saying about patients there. So I just did a search on patients basically. And I saw that yeah. somebody four years ago had uh, this to say, and they said, patience comes with a trading plan. A trading plan comes with knowledge and knowledge comes from a good mentor. So nice. Yeah, I, I really like that. And I, I think it all is very right. And it really starts with having decent knowledge. And with that, you can build a trading plan for whatever trade setup you want to, uh, you want to trade, and then you can manage your emotions and then patience is just, you know, part of the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So. One of the things that, uh, you know, um, I, I'm going to share a little bit of my experience on when it comes to patients and when I've dealt with students where they have very fluctuating patients up or down, there's a lot of it that has to do with prep. Okay, preparation for what you're going to do. If that has a hole in it, you're going to take 50 trades. Your prep cannot be wrong. Your prep is your temple. Okay, you know how everyone wakes up and they like to brush their teeth and then or everyone wakes up and they like to go to the gym that routine that you have it must be prep a prep cannot be done with one eye closed when i say one eye closed it cannot be habitual it needs to be focused you can do things of habit but you're not focused like you can drive but then when you reach your destination you're like I don't remember seeing anything on the way. If you ask me to recall anything, I don't know what I drove by, but I just know this way because I do it every single day. You don't want to be that guy. You want to be ultra sharp, ultra focused. It's prep is everything. If you're prepped and you know you want to do a trade at a certain location with a certain look to it, then when that look comes in, you can say, I'm going to do the buy. And as that buy fails, you're constantly still realigning yourself and saying, why is it not working? What happened to that look? You're not taking into shock. If you're, if you're not prepared, you're taken into shock. That shock makes you go out of balance. And that out of balance makes you says, next trade, next trade, next trade, larger yeah. lot size, next trade, next trade, larger lot size. 
And then broker calls you and says, hey, man, margin call. And it, that can even happen if it's if uh, if you get in and your prep is not good and it, it you know blasts up if you're doing a buy and it shocks you that it's going so well that you were not prepared for that and you're like oh let me just bank this amazing profit what it is right now because I don't want to you know what if it just comes crashing down if you're yeah. not prepared for that not staying that, not staying patient with taking your wins too that's yeah. another thing that just came to yes. my mind so. You know, you know that part, how how late that comes in a trader's journey, that part right there, what you guys just talked about, though, all the energy in the industry, if you look around anywhere, if you look at any webinar, if you look at any questions that are coming in, even to our emails, that the questions that come in, all energy is spent on how do I enter? <laughs> all yeah. the energy is spent on how do I enter? But if we go back to that notion of that guy that I want to hurt so badly, that says, let your winners run. Okay, cut that your losses guy. short. Let your winners run. <laughs> Why aren't we focusing on the time when we do get the trade right? Where are we going to get out? Where are we going to get out? And what happens if that doesn't reach? What's plan B? What's plan C? What's plan D? So there should be no shock. And you're able to respond to the market out of, oh, I was expecting that instead of, what just happened? I think um, <clears throat> to to go off of having a good plan to start with, it's also easier to learn from in the future too, because if you keep bouncing around from different things, like doing something different every single time as well, how yeah. are you going to really learn from that going forward? Because it's like, if you have a set plan and a good plan that you use and you like, then it's just a matter of tweaking it each time instead of like if you're doing something different every time you don't know what you did yeah. wrong and right each time yeah. so absolutely it's like, absolutely you know so let's bring it grow. back yeah let's perfect I, I i like that i really like how you said that let's bring it back to then the the trader who's starting in the industry he's going in the industry with this notion of i'm gonna do this trading system I don't know anything. I need to do this trading system or strategy, whatever it is. I'm doing the trade. I made a loss. I'm not sure what happened, but let me email the person who made the strategy and be like, listen, man, the strategy doesn't work. Got it. Next. I'm a, three months down the line. I have a little bit more knowledge. I watched more YouTube videos. I've read more books in the encyclopedia about trends and candlesticks and everything like that. Now, I'm taking trades. I think this is a buy because I'm not following anybody else's rule. I'm following my own rules now, but it's very gray area. It's not sharp. I do the buy. Oh, it didn't work. I'm going to do the buy now. Oh, it didn't work. I'm going to do the buy now. It's very vague, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So now if they're doing that and they say, okay, maybe this technique doesn't work. Let me go looking for a new technique. How long do you think this cycle is going to last? Well, you're going to like just start from scratch all over again, you know, because you're not like you have nothing to compare it to the second time that you go back and look and like, oh, if I just do that better, it's do totally different. So. There is there is a journey traders have to take to learn and be better. If you keep cutting the journey and spinning it into a new journey every three to five days or every three months, you're never going to start the journey because you keep flipping the system over and over again. Maybe this is not the right strategy. Maybe that is not right. Let me tell you right now, there is no such thing as a perfect strategy. It does not exist. It's like trying to look for all these hacks as in shortcuts, but they have no cohesion. They're just random hacks. So in the end, it's not going to take you anywhere. Yes, absolutely. About having patience with your the actual strategy that you're you're using like give yeah, it a chance you know like just give a bit of patience with it you know and uh absolutely unless absolutely. you're trading with a robot and Sorry? it's a perfect strategy yeah <laughs> but it, well, what do you do when you're trading with a robot the decision to keep that robot running or turn it off is controlled by a human with emotions <laughs> isn't that right but the moment the robot robot makes a little bit of a you. loss sorry I said, if you have a good robot, you're out fishing or playing golf or whatever it is you enjoy doing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about turning it off. 
Well, yeah, but uh, you're gonna <laughs> check the check the PL someday, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we all know those robots don't exist. So. Yeah. so, so there, there's so much, there's so much in this industry that is so. What is that? What is that right word called? How do you when you when you downsize how so, how big something is, and you're like, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. This okay. this industry is so simplified that trading is child's play it's child's play you just come in you see a green button a red button your job is you hit the green button and you make money you hit the sell button you 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 make money but if you're losing money whoa you did something wrong today perhaps you shouldn't have talked to your wife that way or your husband that way that's why you made a loss right is that the answer Perfect. Uh, let's look back um, <laughs> on your childhood and what happened like 10, 20 years ago. Oh, look at the stars. They are not alone. <laughs> They're not alone. like people come up with all kinds of funny reasons saying I lost because I should have been focused. But why did you bring me coffee at this time? Like what? What, what does that have to do with anything? It's like I can get I can I can understand you were distracted. But are you telling me if you didn't get distracted, you were on your way to be a multimillionaire on that trade? Come on. Yes. <laughs> so the, the process is so important. It's so important to make sure that whatever you're doing comes with a solid prep. Whatever yes. you're doing, your execution follows that prep. If at any point you feel you're, you're going off balance from your prep and you don't feel in control anymore, you're too, you're too late. Your patience is gone now. But how do you know you're no longer in control? That consciousness comes from your desire to say, I want to fix this problem. Yeah. If you know you want to fix this problem, you will be conscious next time you lose control. You will be aware, hey, it's happening again. If you're aware of it, you can control it. But if you're not aware of it, it's just going to keep happening. It's going to keep happening. It's going to take you for a ride over and over again. Why well, it's important to do post analysis and reflect on it all the time so that you're like, yeah. you can actually visual uh, hear yourself saying it to yourself, you know, if you do it in video format, but it, it reinforces it. So the next time you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that again, or, you know, whatever it is. So. If I share with you guys some of my post analysis from like 2010 or 2009, you'll hear me say stuff like, what is wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> I talk to myself like I'm some idiot. Like, what what are you doing? Why are you doing this again? Like, you can really hear hear the self hate is in in like, you know better. What are you doing? But that yeah. process is what every trader needs to go through to actually get onto the other side and saying, I everyone goes through this. I did my time. I served my time. I overcame it, and now I'm on this side. You want to bypass that? This is not the industry to bypass it. You cannot bypass that. It does not exist. As long as you're a human, if you become a spirit, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but as a human being, you cannot bypass that because your emotions are built in into your DNA. Okay? They're built in. You cannot remove it. You just cannot remove it. So you have to learn to do what? Manage. You no, know, work with them. Work with yeah. it. Work with it. Turn it into a weapon instead of your downfall. Turn it into your greatest asset instead of a liability. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not like like even us on the panel. Like it's not like we don't have. We still have all the same emotions we did, however many years ago. Absolutely. Worse. <laughs> Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. It's not like we turned it off and became robots ourselves or something like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> when you pass that phase, the initial phase of dealing with emotions, it does not mean emotions. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean emotions don't exist anymore. Yeah. And then suddenly we talk like this and we must make profits. <laughs> it's like, like, you're still a human being. You're still going to make mistakes. Yeah. That's normal. I think that's important to realize, too. It's not like it's, it goes away ever necessarily. It's just how well you learn from it every day and manage it on a daily basis. Yeah. It's Absolutely. It's not something to eliminate, yeah. really. So. I think that's the key to learn from it every single day that you're trading. And then that, that phase that you have to go through, it will shorten. Correct. Because if you're not learning from it every day, the, the phase will just, you know, go until infinity. 
So can, when a person says, I, I'm going to give myself a few months to try trading, whether it's Forex stocks, cryptocurrencies or futures or options, I'm going to give myself a few months to learn the technique. Can someone learn the technique in a few months, the technique to trade? Yeah, the gist of it. The sure. gist of it. Yeah, the you can learn how to yeah. trade in less than two months. You can learn it in one month. How you do each trade, that's a whole different thing. Okay, the, the best example I like to always bring up is archery. What is archery? You pull that thing back, you, you shoot, you let go, and you're trying to aim for the dot in the middle. Oh, so simple. I've seen it a million times. I've seen people get gold medals. I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna watch a quick course on this. Got it. I'm an archer now. Watch. Oh, I just killed the guy next to it. You know, <laughs> it's like, like, it's like, like you, you shoot the guy accidentally. Like, oh, I guess it's not so easy as I thought it would be. Like, sorry, man. Like, you're right. <laughs> so, but the whole point is how much to pull, how much to lift your elbow and not. How strong do you need to hold the bow? All yeah. these little things you only realize by doing. Mm -hmm. By doing. So I let me ask you guys this. Archers in here who, could, who are like, what are you doing, Naveen? Like your arm need, needs to be higher. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see the comments uh, in, in the chat. They're like, you got to be breathing also. I'm like, yeah, sorry, man. I'm not an archer. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, Naveen, what you brought up is pretty interesting as well. Um, mm -hmm. what you said about having to do stuff, you know, like to yeah. actually take trades, to learn from them. A, a few, a few years back, we actually got a message from a student and they were telling us, you know, they were learning to trade. They have like, like almost like 50 pages of uh, PDF file about the entire course outline and all the examples on it. Yeah. And they've written down like full article on each, uh, each video. And they were telling me, um, I'm, I'm now in the phase of learning. This is my uh, six months, uh, six month uh, learning process. I'm still going through all the materials and they haven't even put on a single trade. That just, it's just mind blowing how people think, you know, without taking the action to actually trade, it slows down the process way, 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 way more. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I agree. Dramatically, right? Dramatically. Yeah. It, you know, you bring me an intellect into this industry, he's not going to make it. An intellectual person who just says, I can study every pattern, I can st study every technique, I can study every everything. An intellectual person is not going to make it unless he goes beyond theory into application. Yeah. How many people do we have in urban forex who are beyond PhDs, multiple PhDs? Right? We have guys on our team with two PhDs. Right? Well, not me, but... <laughs> not, I said on our team, not on this panel. Like. <laughs> like, like. Right? So, so yeah. it's there. The intellect is there. What I'm trying to tell you, you don't need the intellect. In fact, intellect can become a problem. Because you're so busy trying to learn everything that you're never experiencing anything. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? It's like living a double life. Like when you trade, you live a double life. You live a life outside of your screen. And you're like, oh, this is who I am. This is what I like. This is the shows I watch. But when you're a trader, you're like, I don't like that setup. I like this setup. I don't like entering quickly. I like entering on the test back of it. You come up with your own little things of that's who I am. You know, just like you wouldn't watch the same TV shows I would recommend, you would watch your own TV shows that you like, right? You start to develop this personality and you would only do that if you've been living long enough in, in the trading world. Yeah, you become a trading snob. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like, so if we bring it down into a nutshell, as we close, problems with, tr with patience are what? What are the key problems with patience? Early entries, what else? Lack of planning. planning. Lack of planning, yeah. late entries, same thing, early managing and late trades. exits. Sorry? Managing, yeah, managing trades, both on uh, not holding long enough and exiting too early, so both sides. 
correct? So all of the stuff that we just mentioned, all of these elements of it that we just mentioned, is it a problem with the technique itself? No. You might have the right technique telling you, hey, you should have exited. Why didn't you exit? I didn't know to exit. I thought it was going to go up forever. <laughs> you see, the, the technique might tell you to exit, but you might have not have exited. What happens when that trade turns around and goes into a loss? A normal trader will go into the blame mode. I need to blame somebody because that ain't right. Mm -hmm. Some people get upset. Anybody but myself. Yeah, <laughs> anybody but myself. I don't want to point fingers to myself. It's somebody else's mistake. But it's so hard to take responsibility in the early stages because you just feel upset. You're like, why am I so angry? What's going on? And you start to realize it's you against you. Welcome to the trading world. It's a whole different level of thinking. Yeah. It's fascinating, actually, don't, if you think about it. A lot of levels to it, for sure. All right. So what we'll do now is we're going to switch this over into a webinar. So those of you guys who are tuning in uh, from the podcast, if you want to uh, see the webinar that you have missed, the link will be below the podcast um, in the description somewhere. So you guys will be able to watch the webinar. Those of you guys who are here live, stay put. We're going to go straight into the webinar where I'm going to be showing some of my charts. We're going to talk about things on a a trading level of where patience goes out of control a little bit uh, and we can move away from the discussion of it and more into the practicality of it. All right. So Armo, Lucas and Ian, thank you for your inputs today. As always, you guys are awesome and you guys bring in your own personal experiences and your personal touches into uh, a lot of these topics. Uh, thank you again for, for being on this panel. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Cheers. 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 I'll take over from here.